hello again. I'm out at the Curran Apple Orchard Park in the city of University Place between Tacoma and Olympia. I'm a little late for the apple blossoms. Most of the blossoms are, are gone already, but these trees are just beautiful. Beautiful old trees that are covered in moss and pruned really carefully, lovingly. It's such a pretty place. There's a mower going on in the background and there's some street noise, but other than that, it's a beautiful little park. I'm gonna set up here and do an oil painting. Here's a potential spot. There's a couple beautiful trees here to choose from. I like this view, kind of up the hill. I could zoom in on these two trees. The foreground tree has just a little bit of blossom left. And there's a kind of a warm gray green tree, big tree in the background there that I could use to kind of block in a, a vague, abstract background. It'd be also fun to play with the shadows. I'm here, it's about 10 a.m., so I'm gonna have pretty consistent light for a couple hours now. As the sun travels across the sky, those shadows are going to become shorter. So I could map in those shadows and kind of show the slope of the hill using the shadows. Beautiful view here as well same trees just on the other side. If I go from this direction I could capture just a little more of the beautiful shapes of the trunks of the trees. The one problem with this position is it's really exposed. There's no shade unless I bring out my umbrella and the road is right behind me so I'm gonna get road noise. But of all the trees in the park this one probably has the most bloom left on it so that is an option. It's got a beautiful trunk, beautiful structure of limbs as well. Same tree just from the downhill side. This is a nice spot here. I have the sun to my back. I have some shade under this tree, so this is an option as well. As I'm walking around, I'm just snapping pictures with my iPhone. Then before I make a decision, I can just quickly scroll through the pictures I took and it kind of helps just to look at the tiles, the photo tiles on a small scale in the photo app on my iPhone. I can just kind of go with which one jumps out at me the most on that small scale. It'll often have a, a pretty striking composition. I got lucky or unlucky and picked a day when the lawn was getting mowed here, which is no big deal. It's all freshly mowed here so I don't think I'm going to be in the way if I set up. And the fresh cut grass smells nice. That's an interesting old tree. It sure is pruned low. I can really feel the spirit or the essence of these old trees. There's something about them I can, you can feel the life force when you're so close to them. It makes you just want to reach out and touch them and make a connection. I grew up on an apple orchard in Washington State apples and pears and cherries but mostly apples so it's kind of nostalgic kind of nice to come to a little apple orchard I think the apple orchard where I grew up I think it's all been ripped out and replaced by grapes vineyards and winemaking really popular in Washington and those are beautiful as well now, this is a nice view here this tree is really interesting and it's got a string of trees with a little bit of blossom behind it so that's an option as well as usual I'm having a hard time making up my mind what I want to paint there's just a lot to choose from here beautiful place all right so I'm gonna take a look at the pictures I have on my iPhone and just scroll through them see which ones really jump out at me on a small scale and then get it 
get set up and, and paint something. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I came back for this scene. Uh, this one has the most striking composition to me. Just so pretty. Sorry about the lawnmower noise. Hopefully these guys clear out pretty soon. Um, I just love the, the view of the trees climbing up the hill from here. I like that big, gr warm, grayish tree in the far background. I may exaggerate it a little bit just to take up more of the, the space. Nice location, nice flat spot to stand. Kind of far away from the road and um, like I said, hopefully the landscapers will finish up here pretty soon and it'll quiet down a bit. So I'm going to get started as normal. I'll start with a turpentine wash. I'm going with a 11 by 14 inch panel. I'm using that Gorilla oil primed linen again. Nice lightweight panel. I got a pack of them and I'm playing with them. I'm using this Rosemary & Co. Ivory. It's a zero long flat. It's really nice to just sketch things in quickly. Small enough that I can draw with it but big enough that I can kind of fill in some shadow areas as well as I go. A quick rundown on my colors. Got ivory black, cold gray from Rembrandt. This cold gray is basically ivory black and white, so you can mix it yourself. Titanium white with a little bit of alkyde. It's an underpainting white by uh, Windsor Newton, so it dries a little faster. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, cad red, cad yellow. This is yellow lemon from Windsor Newton. This is radiant lemon from Gamblin and yellow ochre. Um, I may not use all these but I got them all laid out just in case and I've got nice generous piles uh, so I don't have to stop and refill. I'll start with a small brush. I'll draw in the big shapes of the composition and then go into the turpentine wash. I'll start by taking a small brush with a little bit of burnt umber and just sketch in the main trees, the horizon line, and the, and the big bank of trees in the background. Using turpentine to thin out the paint. Alright, there's the quick composition sketched in. A row of trees, row of trees, the horizon line and some background trees as well. And then I map the shadows that I'm seeing right now. With the turpentine wash, I'll be using a lot of warm colors because I like that in a blue or green predominant landscape. It's nice when the underpainting, the turpentine wash is warmer. So I'll go with burnt sienna, cad yellow, maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson maybe a touch of cobalt blue in the very far background to hint at the sky and then as I move forward I'll get a little warmer with more of the cad yellow maybe a little bit of cad red I'm just gonna kinda play with the composition as I do the turpentine wash let things develop a little bit I'm not gonna stay too fanatical I'm not gonna stay too close to the landscape as it is in front of me
you ever wondered if you, you're being trolled? <laughs> These guys just moved in real close and they just keep working over there on that little patch of grass. And it's really noisy when they're working. It's turn up some dust too. Hopefully they wrap up soon. I've got the turpentine wash in. It's a little darker than it needs to be. As I put in the true colors, I'm gonna have to bring up the values a bit. That uh, background especially in the sky is way too dark and vibrant. So now I'll mix up some colors. I'll start with the sky and then the background layer of trees and I'll just move forward in the landscape getting more contrast, more high chroma, more uh, pigment as I move forward in the landscape closer to me. I added some darks as I was doing the turpentine wash as I was wrapping up as the paint was setting up. It's setting up really fast with the sun on the panel. So I was able to add some darks in right on top of the wash to kind of firm up the the graphic design of the trees that I want to make sure jump out. I want that tree there especially to be the focal point. I've put away the turpentine now and I've switched to Gamsol. Even out here outdoors I don't want to be breathing the turpentine fumes any longer than I have to. cobalt blue and titanium white. I'm adding just a touch of burnt sienna to gray it down a bit. Warm it up especially toward the horizon. It gets warmer. As I paint this I'm painting over the edges of the trees. I'll paint back into that sky color. Gives it a nice soft edge for that far background. I'm also dipping into pure white and dipping into pure cobalt blue and burnt sienna just to shift colors a bit as I paint but not drastically. I just want slight shifts. A little warmer, a little lighter as it gets closer to the horizon. Okay, I've set aside that blue sky color. Now I'm going to mix up the next layer, which are the trees in the far background. That big tree especially is gorgeous, so uh, just a note if I need to remix the color later in the studio. It's a very warm burnt umber. Looks like a burnt umber mixed with just a hint of cad yellow and then very grayed down. As I mix, I'm comparing the color to the sky. I want to make sure that the trees are a good step, darker value than the sky. And I'm also comparing the color to the scene just by holding my knife with a little bit of paint up against the, the scene. Here I'm painting in these background trees. I'm putting in the mid value first and then I paint in the shadow and then I paint in the light. That often works if you want to create a bulky look to the trees. It also creates nice soft edges. Finally I paint in some sky holes. It's nice to save that sky color so I can do that. I 
I've got a few more pools of color mixed up. I still have the sky and I've got the background tree colors here. I can dip into those to shift the foreground a little bit here and there and also using those colors will help me maintain color harmony. I've got a range here. I've got a dark and a light for the ground under the trees and I'll introduce just a little bit of burnt sienna as it comes closer to me to give that richness. I've got a few pools of color here for the different trees and for the grass. When I look out at the scene it's all very close to the same green with just slight shifts. I'm going to use pure sap green in the foreground trees in their shadow on the grass. It's a really rich green and also the foreground darker trees the leaf shadows is almost a pure sap green. Uh, I think that'll help bring those trees forward. The center of interest tree the leaves are really orange kind of a bright glowing spring like yellow. So I've got this green mixed up that has a lot of cad yellow in it. Then I've got a little bit of rich red color for the moss on this foreground main tree. I want to paint that first and then I'll go over the top of that with some of the leaves. And I've got a little bit of lavender mixed up. I've exaggerated the, the red and the blue. This is the bark of this foreground tree where the light is on it, where it's not covered in moss. It's a really pretty um, lavender. I'm not going to use much of that, but I do want to throw it in there. I think it'll help that, that center of interest tree pop. So those are the main pools of color. I'll just dip into those and shift it a little bit. Try to use the same brush wherever I can, which will help me to maintain that color harmony and not get too wild with the value changes and the chroma changes. Here's the sap green. say it's challenging and scary to try to take a wild complicated scene like this and try to make it read. It definitely helps to bump up the chroma in the foreground compared to the background that brings that tree forward. Um, 
and then also introducing some contrast, some lights and darks. But yeah, it's challenging. Um, things start to turn to mud. You lose the definition very quickly when you're trying to apply something complex like a, a million leaves. So using a big brush, using the palette knife to just drop in some almost pure color, that helps. Leaving some of the background to read through, that helps. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think this is reading okay. It's a little messy, but I can clean that up a little bit in the studio. I can scrape off some of the thicker paint and paint in a little finer detail after I look at it again. All right, well, getting close. I just want to throw in a couple blossoms now. I'm going to take pure white, add in just a hint of lavender, and just pick out a few blossoms with my palette knife and call it good. Let me keep it abstract, not trying to have patterns or clumps, but I'm also keeping in mind the direction of the sun. The sun is coming from the left. Any flowers, any leaves that are facing the left will be brighter than any that are facing to the right. That helps with the illusion. Well, there's the finished painting. Once the landscapers went away, it quieted down and became really pleasant here. The sun's gone away though. Clouds are rolling in, which was expected, but I was able to capture the shadows while I had them. Yeah, that was challenging. Um, really complicated scene. Hard to hold on to any kind of forms because there's so many greens and branches and leaves but I think it reads okay. Um, I'll take it back to the studio and take a look at it again under some better light. Hey, welcome back to my studio. Well, I've got this 11 by 14 inch oil painting of Curran Apple Orchard. I think that's how you pronounce it in University Place near Tacoma, Washington. I tried something new this time directly after doing the painting I scraped it down to take off any ridges so it's a pretty blurry image right now but I think the bones are there of a pretty interesting painting I like how warm this foreground tree is and I like the fact that it was just at the tail end of the blossoms so the tree has lost almost all of its blossoms I can put just a few of those on there which I think will be a a pretty effect. I also really like the color harmony of this pink and light grayish green. I think that'll make a, a nice composition. What I don't like right now is the regular pattern of these trees in the background. You know, even though you're trying not to create a pattern, it seems to just come out when you're in the thick of it. So I want to correct that somehow. I think I want to make these trees smaller and recede more and this clump of trees here I want to make it bigger but pushed back further so to do that I'm going to thin it out and gray it out not have it be quite so dark 
and maybe keep it a little bit on the reddish alizarin crimson side. There are some nice alizarin crimson elements in the painting in here and here in the shadows and the trunks. So I think I'll play on that but make it more of a gray, less chroma, warm gray in the far background. And then this one as well, I'll keep it green and I'll keep it big and gray it down and lighten it a bit so that the contrast here in these foreground trees will hopefully help bring them forward and, and firm them up, make them more realistic. And then I think I want to add some warmer notes here. This seems a little cool and a little dark for the composition. So for this foreground, I'll add more yellow ochre, more cad yellow. I think I used a lot of cad yellow when I was there. I'll take a look at the, the video I took while I was there and warm this up some and brighten it. That'll, I think, be a nice lead in and maybe highlight a little bit of a path, gray it back, gray it down as it goes back into the distance. So I think that's the game plan. Looks like quite a bit of work on this one to bring it to where I want it, a finished painting, but I'll enjoy it. So I'll get at it and I'll show you the result. As I touch this up in the studio, I'm going to refer to the colors I captured that day. I'll mix the colors based on that. I may shift the values a little higher or a little lower, like here in the foreground. I may warm it up, but I'll stay consistent with some of the other colors that I already captured. That'll keep the nice color harmony. I scraped it down at the end of the day on that day because the paint was pretty thick and I wasn't real happy. I think I might have actually been a little frustrated with the session, maybe a little tired. That happens. And I had this linen panel and I'd heard from Mark D'Alessio, one of the artists that I follow, that you can scrape down canvas or linen and blend edges and get it set up for the next day's painting. So I, I kind of wanted to try that as well. Instead of scraping it down later in the studio when the paint is pretty dry with the liquid, um, I wanted to scrape it down while it was still wet. So it's a little bit of an experiment as well. Here's the finished painting after a few finishing touches. I liked that method from Mark D'Alessio where you scrape it down while the paint is still wet. It really softened up a lot of the edges and took away all the ridges. So it was pretty nice to paint over that. It did require a lot of retouching though. I had to retouch almost every area before I was happy with it. I really lightened up this background middle and warmed it up. And I tried to take away the, the pattern in the background trees. Tried to make a kind of clump here, small individual there, a big clump there, and then a couple kind of indistinct trees over there. Break it up a bit. and It's kind of what I remembered from that day as well. Kind of a slope to the background trees that counteracted the slope to this center of interest apple tree in the foreground. What I really tried to do in the end was to bring out the character of this main tree. When I was there, it seemed like every tree in that little orchard had a character. And maybe that's just me because I grew up on an apple orchard and I, I love orchards. I love trees, period. And I really feel like they have a spirit. They have a presence. And each one is, is pretty unique. So I was really trying to bring out the craggy, warm, benevolent nature of this tree and that may sound a little woo-woo to some of you um, I'm not really a religious person I do feel like nature has a a spirit or a, a presence and sometimes when I'm walking in the woods I can really connect with that so I'm just trying to communicate that in this painting that this is a lovely old tree that's seen all kinds of years and all kinds of seasons and it's beautiful and it's putting out its leaves and its blooms at the end of this kind of warmer than normal 
spring and it's gonna survive it's got moss on its branches it's a beautiful warm green compared to the kind of darker greens of these trees the shadow side of these trees over here so that that was the main point of this painting was to kind of connect with that tree and to bring out the beauty of that tree and then also just to play with atmospheric perspective and to explore a new location I really enjoyed it. Beautiful little apple orchard there in University Place near Tacoma. Highly recommend it. Well, thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.